opening grad school applications. And as you can tell from all these awards and accolades that I've gotten, I have written applications in my life and I have been successful. And it's even beyond that, right? Over the past few years, I've helped so many people like yourself who wanted to go to grad school, you know, work on their applications. And we've won over, they have won over $2 million in scholarships. We have students who've gone to Oxford, Cambridge schools, UBC, all the schools you're mentioning, King's College, you know, getting us help people to get into those places. And one of the things we love to do is to teach you how you can do this, how you can also, you know, achieve your dreams using education. So if you have any questions at any point in time, just write it in the chat. I may not be able to take it immediately, but I'll definitely get to your question. Now, before we go in, the first thing I need to find out is what does going to graduate school mean to you? And this is a very interactive session. You're going to get the best out of it if you, um, you know, chat with me. What does going to grad school mean to you? What, what does it mean? Why is it important to you? What are you trying to achieve by going for a master's or a PhD? And be, be completely honest. Okay, I really like to understand, to see if people understand why they're doing something. You know, because when you understand why you're doing something, the motivation, you know, the way you approach your, approach issues, the way you carry yourself will be very different. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Let me know if you can hear me. Okay. So we'll know that if it's a, if it's a localized problem or a general problem. Fantastic. Okay. So yes, Sumto, I can hear you. Awesome. Thank you so much. So Sumto says that um, she wants to go to grad school because it's an yes, opportunity. I can hear you to learn new skills, thank you so much, grow your network and possibly change careers. I love that. Why do you want to go to grad school? I need to understand your motivation. Someone said, just type it in the chat. Someone said, I want to transition into a new career. Another person said exposure and networking. Someone said level up, yes, you know our language, to level up, right? Someone says to transition into academia, all right? Another person says, to level up career and network wise, opportunity to enhance my career trajectory, exposure to the best in the field. Yes, I want to go to grad school to be exposed to a new level. Look, this, I think you guys get it. You get it. Globalized approach to problem solving and analytics. I want to get ahead in my field internationally. I want to migrate. Fantastic, fantastic. To further my field, exposure to my field, amazing. Mm. Nicholas, I like you. Exposure, learn new skills and gain dual citizenship. Amazing. So I can see that, you know, we understand um, why we want to go to grad school. I'm just going to encourage us not to type on the screen, you know. Uh, I'm going to encourage us not to type on the screen. I mean, if there's a way we can disable it, you know, that would be very helpful. Let's, let's, I'm encouraging you not to type on the screen, you know, so that we can... Um, so that we can really focus on, 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 on the slides. Thank you so much. Okay, now for me, I'm gonna be very honest with you. Going to graduate school, pursuing education was an opportunity for a better life. I'm not going to sugarcoat it, right? It was an opportunity to, to change my life, to, to get better opportunities, you know? Um, so for me, my father passed when I was two years old and my mom really, she trained me and my siblings and really did all of the work, right? And for me, being able to go for a master's, being able to do a PhD, being able to, um, you know, being able to change my career trajectory, being able to earn more, being able to do all of that was very important because I wanted to be able to give my mother the kind of life that I believe that she deserved, okay? Another thing closely associated to the first is financial freedom. Like, you need to be able to pay your bills. You need to be able to have a career that, you know, can pay all your bills, that can help you even live the kind of life that you desire if you know that you're destined for more. And that was what I felt. I just felt like, you know, I wasn't satisfied with what I where I was and going to school, up, up, you know, upskilling and putting myself within certain circles would open me up to opportunities, right? Opportunities, yes, not only to meet your needs, but, you know, as you get higher in the game, to so even flex. Now we don't get money, now you know, fine. You get what I'm trying to say? Like, so, it was really a, a stepping stone as well to financial freedom. Now, the third thing also, and I'm sure a lot of you might relate with this, was it was an opportunity to access a safer society that gave me limitless opportunities for career growth and, and progression. So basically, I was looking for a place where if I put in the work, I have a black man blood in me, as we say, if I put in the work, 
my efforts will be rewarded. And I am not saying that there are some places where your effort will not be rewarded. I'm not saying that. But I am saying that, you know, if you, I wanted to go to a place where I would be able to, um, I would be able to, 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 to grow if I put in the work. And the final thing for me was an opportunity to make an impact in the world through my profession. It was very important for me to, to not just have a local mindset. Yes, I grew up in Ibadan, but I wanted my impact to be felt on a global level. And that, those are my reasons. So when I knew my reasons, you know, I knew that there was no amount of work, there was no amount of strategizing, there was no amount of effort that was too much for me to achieve my dreams. So if you don't know your reason, you will fall by the wayside. And that's why I'm starting with this. So if I were you, I would, if you haven't thought about this, and I, if you didn't answer before, I want you to write it. What is your reason? Write it and commit to that reason. What is your reason? If you don't commit to that reason, you understand what I'm saying? It will be difficult for you to, because there are going to be obstacles along the way. It will be difficult for you to overcome those obstacles because you don't know your why. So let us first of all get that straight before we now start talking about the strategies. I was just going to say, look, I apologize. Oh, I wish this webinar would be one hour, but I cannot promise you anything. I can promise you that it will not be less than an hour. I'm going to do my best to wrap it up in an hour and a half, maximum two because of questions. But for me, I want to pour everything on the table today. So please, whatever you've planned for the next few you know, hours, just cancel it because this is going to be, this is a game changer for you. Right, so let's move on. Now we're still talking about the mind and I think it's extremely important to get the right mindset before we go into this, the, the, the actual work. Right. And some of you have heard all sorts of things. And I need to make sure that you you are listening to the right thing and you know the right information, because that will be the foundation for everything that you do. So the first thing I, whenever I have sessions, I like to talk about myths for, or, you know, concerning grad school admission and scholarships. So the first thing you need to, to clarify in your mind is that it's not true when they say that scholarships are reserved for only the brightest students with stellar accomplishments. Now, don't get me wrong. If you've done well in school, it is fantastic and it is good for you. It is good for you, it will help you. But that is not the only thing that matters. And ask me, I did very well in school. And when I was applying for my master's, I thought, ah, ah, <laughs> excuse me. Who is going to reject me? Nobody can reject me. Like, ah, do you, have you seen my resume? Have you seen what I've done? Um, that's how Harvard just sent me a very beautiful rejection letter. I was shocked. I was like, what even, I didn't believe that even Harvard would reject, like why? You know, because I had put in the academic work, right? So for those of you who have very good grades, yes, those grades are good, but that is not all that you need. And now for those of us who don't have very good grades as well, don't despair, don't feel discouraged because the good grades alone are not enough to get you in. There are other facets of your application that, and it's only when I got rejected <laughs> that I realized that, okay, there's more to it than this. And I have helped, we've helped so many people who didn't have first class degrees get into that same Harvard, who didn't, who hadn't achieved, you know, huge things as such, get into some of the top schools in the world or just get fully funded scholarships or go to the country of their dreams. You understand? So, so that's the first thing. It's not only, so if you have good grades, don't think that's all you need. And if you don't have good grades, don't be afraid because good grades are not all that you need, okay? Good stuff. Now, the second thing is that scholarships are available all year round and you can always apply for them. It's wrong. If you notice, if you know about getting, we start talking about applying for your master's, your PhD, we start talking about it as early as April. April, May, that's when we, we are looking for the people who are serious about, you know, their application that year. Why? Because there are deadlines for different things. There's some scholarships that are closing in September. There's some scholarships that are going to close in August. Even before the admission has closed, some scholarships will close. You understand? So I need you to understand that you cannot be lackadaisical about your approach to scholarships. 
right? It is not just available all year round. A lot of times you see people who come to us and say, after the admission has been gotten, so like maybe March, April, and they're saying, where are the scholarships? That's the wrong time to look for scholarships. The right time to look for your scholarships for next year, September, to start next year, September. <laughs> Let's mute ourselves, please. Let's make sure we're muting everyone so that we can get the tea and so that, you know, the people who can watch the recording can get the most out of it. Now, the third thing that you need to also have in mind is that preparing a grad school or scholarship application is not different from a job application or any other application. It's not true. A job application, I've applied for jobs, I've applied for scholarships. They look very different. So if you think, the resume that you use to get that job or the resume you've been sending out, the CV you'll be sending out for a job is the same one that will get you a scholarship. It's not true or will get you admission. They're completely different documents. The, 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 the way they, they look, what they do, the information it's, they pass across are completely different. Now, the fourth thing, which is kind of, I'm really emphasizing this for people with good grades who just assume that it's a given, is that once you have good grades, you will get a scholarship. It's not, it's not always true. The fifth thing is that rejections will not happen. It's wrong. Rejections are part of the game. In fact, I love the way people now are being proud about their rejections because it means that you tried. So your rejections will happen. Even I have faced my rejections and I'm proud of it. I'm doing a PhD here at University of Toronto, but guess what? Some other schools rejected me for PhDs. <laughs> and when, you know, I, I have a bootcamp that I teach and I'm going to tell you about it, you know, and I'm going to help you understand why some rejections happen and why some rejections that happen should not stop you from trying again or from re-strategizing. But that's not for today, because if not, you guys will be here for six hours. This is like my favorite thing to talk about. If you can, can you tell that I'm excited? I want to see in the chat. Can you tell that I'm excited? Yes, 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 yes. Let's talk, in the, let's talk in the chat so that if, because if you talk to me, I'm just going to start talking to you. So this is like my favorite thing to talk about. Then this one used to piss me off the most, that some schools are not for people like you. Excuse me. Like, if you've ever had a mindset that this kind of school is not for someone like me, I want you to throw that mindset away. You can only see as far as your mind can see. When I was in Nigeria, when I was in Ibadan, from my 200 level, I said, mm -mm, I'm going to Cambridge, I'm going to Oxford, or I'm going to Harvard. That's what I wanted. I'm going to Butterworth, please don't write on the screen. <laughs> I'm going to Cambridge, I'm going to Oxford, or I'm going to Harvard. That's, that was all that was in my mind, you know? Because nobody should tell you what you can or cannot do. You have a right to try. Your background should not stop you from doing anything. You have a right to try. Try and be rejected, it's okay. But nobody should tell you that you, 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 you don't, nobody should tell you that you cannot do X, Y, Z. I hate it so much, you know? I, I don't like it. So if you've been talking to people and they've been telling you that this is not for you, you masters, when we were in university, you were struggling with your assignments, blah, blah, blah. You need to change your circle, please. And I know I'm still talking about the mind. I need you to hold on and stay with me, right? Because the tips I'm gonna give you for your application is hard. But if your mind cannot, if your mind cannot conceive it, you cannot do it. Harriet, I'm going to address your question because this is the, the reason why I'm going to address your question. So Harriet is asking me, can I share a template for an academic CV? This is not the time for a template. And number two, the reason why many people are rejected year in, year out is because they're using templates. You are using a template. You are using a template. It is not about templates. It's about understanding what you need to do to make your story convince the, the, the admissions committee for the particular school that you are going. It is not about CV templates, resume templates, essay templates. We will talk about examples, you know, and I talk about this in the bootcamp, we'll show you examples, but a template is the beginning of the end of your grad school journey. I can promise you, I don't give templates. You can never see me giving a template. I will show you examples, you understand? And I will tell you why and the examples are not even, the examples are not like, you know, just like 
um, just, oh, this is an example. No, you have to understand the person's backstory before you can see why that particular document was the best for them. Don't let me be distracted by the comments. Let me close the comment section so that we will not be here for four hours. I'm going to, sorry, I just find it so distracting when we write on the screen. So I'm going to do my best to, um, I'm going to have to, to do this as often as, um, as, as I can, just so that I can have a clear screen. Thank you so much. Now, another myth that you need to get out of your mind is that you studied a bad program in university and so opportunities are not available for you. Those of you who studied programs that are not even popular, in fact, you are blessed and highly favored of the Lord. That's the truth. You are actually blessed. So you studied something that, I'm not saying some courses are better than others, So, but you didn't study engineering, economics, law, you know, blah, blah, blah. You studied sociology. You studied, you know, communications. You studied, um, you know, zoology. You studied jumpology. You studied something else that maybe people are like, ah, what did you study in university? Really, what are you going to use that degree to do? There's nothing like that. That your bad program. That your program that is not good for the job market, in quotes. It is not a barrier to helping you get a scholarship or get admission. The final one is that deadlines are only a suggestion. I mean, do I need to tell you about this? If the school has multiple deadlines, you must apply at the first deadline. Do you understand me? So let's let's get it, let's get it in clear in our minds that you cannot just say, okay, some schools will say they have rolling admissions. They will accept applications up until so, 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 and so dates. I hear you, but you, that you know what you're looking for. You know your reason. You must apply as soon as things are open so that you have the highest chance of getting in and getting funded. So don't just say the deadline is December 30. You apply December 30. Don't do that, okay? Now, what was my journey like? What was my journey like? And I'm saying this not to talk about myself, but so that you can see yourself in me, see where I am and understand that if I can do it, you can do it. So this is like one of my favorite sweatshirts. Not only is it very warm, but it reminds me of the moment when my life started to change. And I will talk to you also about how, you know, going to Cambridge is actually what started this whole getting. And Every year, I tell people, if you follow me online, my handles are Miriam Momodu underscore, and getting is at getting edu everywhere. You will see the joy whenever people send me there. I just got in, I just got in message because I know that that's like the first step into a life changing journey. Now, what was my journey like? So, yes, I have ginger, I'm very motivated and everything, but I'm not going to tell you that I didn't doubt myself a little bit. I did. And you probably are too. You know, maybe you're thinking about your grades, you're thinking about your ability to write. You know, you could be thinking about whatever inadequacies, you could be thinking about money. You know, I had a lot of self-doubt. I, and, and I'm a little, I usually don't go live on Facebook, but I'm a little, but I, I'm, I'm going to share this story. I remember when I was applying for my, my master's, it was after, it was just after law school, just before NYSC. I've never been so broke in my life. But one thing I know, and I'm, I'm, I'm a Christian and I'm very vocal about that. One thing I know is that when your spirit, when your mind, when you want something so bad, right? Even there's a book called The Alchemist. It says when you want something so bad, the whole universe will conspire to help you achieve it. I was broke. I didn't have up to 10,000 naira in my account that day. And I was just praying to God and I said, God, how am I going to pay for my application fee, how am I going to pay for my transcripts? How am I going to pay for all these things? And I got an alert of 150,000 naira. I was like, what? It was, I was a recipient of total scholarship in university for three years, they didn't pay me. They paid me just at that time when I needed the money. I almost ran, like I almost ran crazy. But I, I had such a hunger that somehow the world <laughs> just had God, the universe, and just had to find a way to get, provide this for me. So there are going to be challenges along the way, but let your desire not waver, right? I also doubted myself that who am I to go to Cambridge? Like this place is for the elites. Who am I to, to dare to go to these places? But I still put myself in there, right? Now, another other challenges are countless hours searching for scholarships, opportunities, school ranking, eligibility criteria, YouTube tutorials, trying to write my essay, working on it, working on it. For my PhD application, you know, I, I'm sorry, these are actually personal stories and thinking about the struggle, 
I'm happy for where I am. But thinking about the struggle, it was life. So don't worry, we have all struggled. You understand? We've all struggled. If you're struggling now, it's okay. You know? So I remember when I was applying for my PhD, I had a few days of leave and I went home to visit my mom in Ibadan. And she was like, ah, ah, you know, for those who don't understand my languages, I'm about to speak Yoruba. She was like, oh, dear, Bami Shere, you're not even playing with me. I wasn't playing with her because I was working on my proposal. I said, mommy, you don't understand what I'm going through right now. I need to write this proposal. My mom was like, what kilo tension more you know, what's wrong with you? Why it's so serious? But I knew what I wanted. I was like, this woman, you don't even know that this thing is for you. You understand, I, I was misunderstood. So people are gonna say you are extra. They're gonna say, what is it? No, you understand, are you the first to look for scholarships? It's fine. But that was my own journey, right? I was broke, misunderstood, you know? I was discouraged when I was writing my essays. I remember calling so many people in my field and it's something you're going to have to learn how to do. I was calling some lawyers who had started their PhD, some who were working in the area I was interested in, I had to ask them questions. Okay, this is what I'm thinking. This is what I'm writing. Does it make sense? Does it make sense? Can we tweak it, right? Another thing that I did, I remember that time. And I, you know, the next point is sacrifice. Time, effort, money, and emotions. That time I was working in a company in Lagos then. After work, everybody said, ah, Miriam, you're not going home. You're not going home. I would say, ah, don't worry, I'll go. That's six o'clock, everybody has gone. I stayed in my office every day till 11 for months because I was preparing my PhD application. Every day I stayed in the office till 11 p.m. I mean, Lagos, it meant I was avoiding traffic, which is great. But I need to let you know that you have to have a mindset that I'm going to work and I'm going to sacrifice. I, if you are, there's anybody either on the internet or anywhere, who is telling you that, just come to me, you will get a scholarship. They are lying. If they are not highlighting the work and the sacrifice that you will have to make along the way. But trust me, I don't regret the work because I am reaping the reward of my, of my hard work. Okay, so I also remember at that time, there was this textbook that I needed. That time was 2016 or so, you know, 2016, yes. That time, that's when the dollar, you know, pound was going like crazy. It was like 500 for the first time. There was a book I needed for my research. How much was my salary, right? But I was like, oh, more, I have to buy it. I've never bought an ebook for 120 pounds before. As the, the thing hit my account, 60K, I almost fainted. But I needed that book to write my research properly and I couldn't access it, I bought it. Ebook, oh, I couldn't even hold the book, 120 pounds. So there are sacrifices you will make along the way. And at the end of the day, it has led to multiple offers. My Vanier alone is worth $150,000. In a year, in one year, I won almost $200,000 worth of scholarships. Plus the PEO, plus the Delta Kappa Gamma, plus the new, new college um, senior doctoral fellowship award. And all these came through hard work. And let me tell you, I'm not saying this to hype myself or anything. Yes, I'm hardworking, whatever, whatever. But there are many opportunities like this, if you are ready. Please, can you chat that I am ready? I have to get you mentally ready before I tell you the work to do. Because oh, no, this work is too much, this work is too much, this work is too much. But if you're not mentally ready, you understand, you won't know why it's important for you to do this work. I was ready and you need to be ready. Good, I am ready, okay, fantastic, fantastic, okay, okay. If you're not ready, say you're not ready, yo, and maybe you can just leave the chat, right? But I don't want you to leave, I want you to be ready. I want you to be the one that will change the fortunes of your family, you understand? Education can be your connect. I don't know Dangote, I don't know what Edola, but this education has led me to, to let me not even talk. Let me not even talk. So this, this just brings me naturally to where I'm going. And I want you to start thinking about your own life and thinking about where you want to be. This education. So you, you remember this girl. Remember this girl. See this girl. This is her now. This is her now. Yes, I've, I, I've lost the shape that I had before, but we are still fine. You understand? When you're eating, you're eating well. So <laughs> you're now fat. <laughs> you know, just kidding, just kidding. But this education has connected me to places that I never imagined in my life. You understand? When people see me, they see my resume, they see the things I've done. They are reaching out to me. This just January, I, I got offered, I reached out to some people at the World Bank. This World Bank that I was hearing about, you know, from the Ibadan, I was like, wow, you know, World Bank is unachievable. You know, I, I went to the World Bank for a conference a few years ago before COVID happened. And then, this general, I reached out to some people at the World Bank and they offered me a consulting position. I rejected it. 
Why? Because I told them the money was not enough. But that to me was like, wow, me, you know, I, me, like sometimes I still, I'm still like dreaming. It's like, I'm still dreaming. You know, some of the things that have come to me, it's like me, and all of this is because of education. I went to the World Trade Organization. I hosted a panel. The kind of people that were hosting panels are big organizations like World Economic Forum, you know, top universities are hosting panel. Me, I hosted my own panel. The room was full. It was full. It was packed. Me, I went to Switzerland and did that. Me from Ibadan. You understand? I have worked in a multinational company in Nigeria. I, in fact, there are some announcements I cannot make. When you guys hear it in a few months, you will understand why I can't make it, right? I've, 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 I've achieved all these things. I have not even started. I look at it. I say I never even make camp. I've not even made it. You understand? But all of this is on the platform of education. You don't need to know anybody. You don't need to give your your your, your body. You don't need to give your money. You don't need to do anything. You just need a good education plug and work hard. Now. Let's go. Let's go. Do you want me to go? Do you want me to go? I'm sorry. I'm looking at the time. Should we go? Should we move on? You know, and above all, one of the things I'm most proud of is founding getting because it means I help people to achieve their dreams. My biggest one of the things that I'm looking forward to in my life is to just be walking on the street and someone just say, oh, Mary, I'm high. You know, through getting, this is what I have achieved. I get those emails and it's, it's like the joy of my life. I think it's a ministry, you know, that God has put in my hands. Okay, now let's go into the T. So you have the right mind. You have the right mindset of what is, this is not magic. It is process. I'm not teaching you magic, I'm teaching you process. Okay, and as an academic, that's how my head works. It works, it, it is a process, it is a strategy, and it works. It has worked for years, it will work for you if you implement it. Now, now that you're, you're trying to go to grad school, you know why, you know your why. You're trying to go to grad school. There's something I need to let you know about, which is the 80-20 rule. What does that mean? It means that on this journey, 20%, only 20% is important to, but only 20% is not in your hands. Don't you find that right? You're, you're hyping me. You're showing my interview. Only 20% is not in your hand. But 80% of this journey is in your hands. And while that 20%, you probably have no control over it. You have control over 80%. And 80 over 100 is what? Is an A. So if you can do the 80% properly, the 20% that is not in your hand, you know, you're still... Yeah, but you're still likely to succeed. But it also helps that you're aware of what that 20% is. Now, what is the 20% that is not within your power? This process is competitive. You see, as you are here, that you want scholarships. There's somebody in Pakistan, Rajiv in Pakistan. He wants to apply to that same program. There is um, Mukunde from Uganda. He wants to apply for this same program. There is Claire from Maryland in the US. She wants to apply for that same program that you are applying for. There is Richard from England or Sweden who wants to apply for this. There is Ho Chi from Korea who wants to apply for this program. So the first thing you need to understand, please, sorry, I forgot to do this. I always like to do this. If you have any friend that you love, that you think should be here, why haven't you forwarded the link to them? Forward the link to them because sometimes it's hard to explain things to people. Save your, save your saliva. Forward, just forward the email to them and tell them to join. Send it to them on WhatsApp. Let them join us so that you don't have to, <clears throat> so that you don't have to be, um, so that you don't have to be talking too much. Send it to them, okay? Um, the recording will also be made available, but so that they can also ask questions if they have any. Please just remember to mute ourselves. So this process is competitive because there are many people around the world who want the scholarships that you want. And I have to let you know that. And what that should do is not to make you feel like it's impossible. It is to make you realize that you must do your best. To make you realize that you must be able to say, ah, I died on the line. I did everything I could do. You understand? I did everything I could do, right? To deal with the competitiveness of this process. Now, what is in your hand? And this is what we're going to be talking about for the rest of this webinar is the 80%. Selecting the right course that you are interested in, not only that, but that can give you the opportunities that you need to get in, get the scholarship, have a good career. Now, selecting the right destination 
in line with your life and career goals and your past, that some of us, we may have to look at non-traditional destinations, maybe because of, sometimes because of our grades, sometimes because it is a backup plan, sometimes because it's a stepping stone to somewhere else. A lot of us, we, we, one of the mistakes I made when I was applying to school, say, ah, it must be Oxford, Harvard, Cambridge, or otherwise, no, I was lucky. As now I realize I was lucky. You understand? I realized I was lucky. You are, there's something called your, your rich school, your match school, and your school. Sometimes they will be in the same country. Most times they shouldn't be in the same country. So a lot of people are just applying to, which you ask their friend, which school are you applying to? I'm applying to so and so school, you too, you apply there. When there are so many other schools that can give you a fantastic opportunity, but you refuse to search. You refuse to know your own story, your own why. Now, the third thing that is modifiable, and this is one of the biggest, our superpower at getting is your documents. We are good to teach you how to write a document that is compelling. You need to build what we call a persona. We need to, you need to build a persona. I'm going to talk about the persona in, in a few seconds. Now, timing. You, you know that we're in a society, perhaps or perhaps not. You may be in a society where some things don't just get done on time. You need to think about that. You need to start working on that. That's within your power. Getting your transcripts on time, you know, mobilizing sometimes other people to put pressure, you know, is within your power. And the final thing that is completely within your power are the kinds and the quality of documents that you submit. I see so many documents sometimes and I'm like, ah, you think these documents can stand beside Claire's documents from England? or beside Ho Chi's documents from Korea, it cannot stand. And those are the things that you have in your power that you can fix. If you have to do an interview or you need to speak to a supervisor, you have to die on the line. All the jobs that were very competitive that I got, when I was going for those applications, I said, lie, lie. If there's only one person, it will be me. And I put in the work required. It's not just about motivational talk. I put in the work. The way I, the way I prepare for interviews is as if, there's, there's, it's as if a, something, is, something else is going on. I go, I am extra. If you go and check my Instagram page, everything, I call myself the extra queen. Because it is not going to be because I didn't do something that I won't get an opportunity. God forbid. Let it be that it was the 20%. But let it, be, let it not be because I didn't do something. Now, I'm going to tell you the some things you need to start doing. And the first thing you guys, you know, the first thing you need to bear in mind, or the first thing that we're, we're mostly concerned about is scholarships. How do we find the scholarship? Where does the money reside? Now, there's something that I call, and if you know, you're not writing, this is where you need to start writing seriously. There's something that I call a scholarship funnel. And I think my team was so brilliant to come up with this funnel. We need to get the funnel and get the money into the piggy bank. A scholarship funnel. What does this mean? Now, there are five types of scholarships you need to have in mind. The first type are called the external general scholarships. Now, before I go into that, I want to ask you guys in the chat, okay? I'm gonna open the chat again because I was distracted before. I want to ask you in the chat that, you know, um, how many people do you know, wherever, whichever country you are from, let me know your country. How many people applied for the uh, Chevening scholarship in your country. Just give an estimate. And how many people received this, the, 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 the Chevening scholarship? Mention your country, mention an estimated number of people that you think applied, and mention the number of people that you think got that scholarship. So I've seen a lot of Nigerians. How many people applied for the, okay, fantastic. Joyce said 60,000 people applied for the uh, Chevening scholarship and 57 people won. Uh, 2,000 people can win the Chevening. Where? It's not up to 100 people that win in a year. So 60,000 people in Nigeria and only 57 winners. Benedette said, five, I know five people who applied and none got in. Now, the Chevening, and I'm telling you, this, these are the things that I wish I knew. And when I say that, <laughs> In, when I, before I, I started this work with getting, I look back and I'm like, oh, my God just helped me. But I want your situation to be more than God just helping you. I want it to be that you went and you got the information. You understand? You were ready. You know, Farida said 10 million and 50 got in. That's, I don't know if 10 million people applied. But I know thousands of people apply every year. Now, the Chevening is an example of an external general scholarship. What is external general? External in that 
it is not internal to your school. It is external. It's an open scholarship, right? And it's general, which means anybody from any field, from zoology to law, to medicine, to civil engineering, to music, to arts, to communications, anybody can apply. So it's external in that it's not attached to a school and it is general in that anybody can apply. Do you know what that means? That's the top of this funnel here. It is what they call in my language, boboero. That means all, everybody. And the truth is that out of those maybe 8,000, 50,000 people that applied for the Chevening, maybe even 1,000 of them already have first class, they have a startup, they've done this, they've done that. Like even those, let's assume even one, only 1,000 are excellent. Out of those 1,000, only 57 will be selected, which means even people who are good are not going to get selected. Even people who are excellent, even people who are perfect, will not get selected. And that is why when you are applying for scholarships, if you are applying for a scholarship, for example, to the UK, and your plan is that, oh, I will get the Commonwealth or the Chevening scholarship, you don't have a plan yet. That is an external general scholarship, right? You must apply for it. You should because, hey, it can be your turn. But that's not the kind of scholarship that you rely on. Are you listening to me? It's not the kind of scholarship that you rely on. It's the kind of scholarship that if you get it, it is like, whoa, fantastic. I'm glad. God, I'm blessed. But it is not the kind of scholarship that you rely on with your chest. So, so oh, you want to go for your master? Yes, so I do. I want to apply for, I'm, I've applied for the Chevening scholarship. You've not applied for anything. Do you understand? You don't have a scholarship plan. If an external general is your scholarship, uh, that's what you're relying on. You don't have a plan. Can I, can we, can we, can we, can we agree that if you are relying on an external general scholarship, you don't have a plan? If it's a road scholarship you are looking for, you don't have a plan. You don't have a plan. Commonwealth Chevening roads, you don't have a plan. All right? Apply, oh, please don't say Miriam said we should not apply for Chevening. Apply because it can be your turn, no, but you actually don't have a plan. If that is the kind of scholarship that you are looking at. Now, we are going into the funnel. And why is it a funnel? It's a funnel because the competition is going to be reducing <laughs> as you're getting into the funnel. The second type of scholarships you need to bear in mind are called internal general. So when you are, what does that mean? It means it is internal to a school. So this scholarship is available at LSC. This scholarship is available at Tufts University. This scholarship is available at McGill University. So that means that automatically you have cut out everybody who did not apply to that school. So the competition pool is lower, right? The competition is, is narrower, which means your chances of getting it is increased. Does that make sense? So internal scholarships, the scholarships in, and that's why a part, a huge part of this journey is research. Internal scholarships are in that school, but they're internal general scholarships, meaning they're scholarships for everybody. So internal general scholarships, so a, a, a scholarship at maybe UBC for academic excellence, for any program, any graduate program, oh, the chancellor's award for this, this, this. Those are still competitive but you have a chance. So now your own work is to look for the schools in the country that you are interested in that offer significant internal general scholarships. Another example of an internal general scholarship that some of you may or may not know about is a scholarship called the Commonwealth Shared Scholarship. And that's a scholarship that I got. The Commonwealth Shared is, is not, it is, it is the school that will choose who to give every year. Is the school that will choose, not the Commonwealth Commission. So there are Commonwealth shared scholarships attached to specific schools. I know University of Sussex has, Cambridge has, Oxford has, so many of the other schools, LSC, they have a, so there's, it's the list of schools are on their website. Those ones, your chances are higher because it is only, you're only competing with those who have applied to that particular school, not with the entire world. The third type of scholarships, which is now even better, are uh, external specific scholarships. Now, what do I mean by external specific scholarships? External specific scholarships are scholarships that are not attached to a school, but are specific to a particular type of demography. Again, you have to research, you have to know the kind of demographic you belong to 
so that you can be you'll be able to find these external specific scholarships. I'm telling, I'm giving you guys the TO. This is hot tea. And I actually teach this in, in the boot camp, but I, I I just have to make sure that you are living here with something. Okay. External specific. You have to know what is the what demography do you belong to? Now, what do I mean by demography? I, for example, I am black. Okay. Not only am I black, I am African. Okay, not only am I African, I want you to tell me what are your characteristics. Start telling me in the chat so that I want you to do the assignments right here and then. I'm Black, I'm African, there's a difference between those two. Okay, I'm female. Ah, you people have said age. Uh, sorry, I'm not 30 plus. <laughs> so I probably don't qualify that the ones that are less than 30. I am 30, unemployed is not a good characteristic, Simi. That's not the kind of demography they're looking for. You know, um, you, okay, Miriam says she's Muslim. Daniel says she's black. Someone says they're STEM, good, good. Someone says they're tech, good. Someone says black, African, Nigerian, female. Someone says developing country. Someone says Christian. Someone's, you understand my point. What are your characteristics? Somebody says sports. You know, someone says financial constraints, someone says volunteer, female, arts, sub-Saharan Africa. Good. Those are specific characteristics. Someone said leadership. Someone said development worker. Yes. You, you need to say, if you're a lawyer, you need to say lawyer. If you're a banker, an economist, you need to say economist. Those are part of your characteristics. If you're handicapped, yes, handicapped. Open-minded is not a characteristic. It's, it's a demography. You know, how can they put you in a in a particular you know um yeah demography is the word someone says activist daniela says first generation you guys are brilliant you are brilliant so i hope this is helping you think about what are the someone says mathematician these specifics that are specific to you you now need to look for organizations that believe in your cause that believe in things that matter uh -huh. to you you understand what I'm saying? So what does that mean? It means that when you're looking for scholarships, if you are a lawyer, in fact, it was only until like two years ago. I'm sorry, I'm a lawyer. So I give a lot of law examples, but all of these things apply if you can sit down and search. And that's why I love my method because no matter who you are, if you can sit down and do the work, spend two days on the internet using the strategies, you are going to find something. If you can even be as, as there was a time I, I, I gave an example in the boot camp about, I think, structural engineering, like it didn't take me up to one hour to find where the opportunities were in that field. So easy. You understand? But what I realized, I said the, the International Law Association actually has a scholarship for students who want to pursue an LLM. I don't think a Nigerian or an African has ever won it. Maybe we don't know about it. So think about what are the, the NGOs that believe in sponsoring women, I can mention a few. PEO scholarship, Margaret McNamara scholarship, AAWU scholarship, people are beginning to be open to those ones. Delta Kapagama scholarship, these scholarships fund women, right? They're external, they're not attached to any school. There are scholarships specifically for black people. So if you're going to Canada, I found out, like, I, I, and the thing about what, what, what we teach is, we can't give you a list. Why? Because your characteristics will determine what is most applicable to you. Yes, we can give you a list of the general. Well, the people who succeed are the ones who are able to find any scholarship from this external specific, internal specific to the dual specific. You understand? So what I'm going to encourage you to do is to identify your characteristics. You see, there's also the Wellcome Trust Foundation scholarship for doctors. So your field would have scholarship specific to you and the welcome trust is worth over $120,000. Somebody who is not a doctor cannot be thinking about the welcome trust scholarship because it doesn't apply to them. They can't even know about it. So the same way you must be able to find the scholarships that apply to you, but if you don't even know what you're looking for, you will not find it. So we need to be aware that these scholarships exist. Some of them may not be Ooh, they may not be much, but $10,000 here, $6,000 here, it goes a long way. Just the other day I was looking, I just said, I love doing this randomly. I was looking for scholarships in Canada and I found that there's one organization for, you know, supporting black students, you know, in Canada and they will give you money for your school. So it's not 
uh, for these external specifics, sometimes you cannot predict how much they will be. Some are much, some are medium, but the challenge is if you've not even found them at all because you haven't looked. Do you understand? So look for organizations and associations in your field. Please let's try to stop writing on the screen. If there's a way we admin, can we try and figure out a way to, to do it? I, or am I, am I boring you guys? Should we stop? You know, should we stop? Because I don't know why, if you're bored, maybe that's why you're writing on the screen. I don't know, please don't discourage me. I'm really, really, this is one of the things I love to do. Okay, please let's, let's keep ourselves on mute. Let's write on the screen. Now, I'm gonna answer as many questions as possible before, um, before we, be we leave here. Please, my team, please just kindly note the questions. So the external specific, I'm not gonna to lie to you, there's gonna be work to find it. So if you are, um, if you are, you look at your demography, right? And one by one, look for scholarships. It's a simple Google search using Boolean operators right? Look for those scholarships. And I have other ways I teach you how to trace scholarship. There's something I call scholarship tracing, which is like a shortcut, but that's, 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 that's not for today. Now, the fourth thing you need to note are the internal specific scholarships. And internal specific scholarships are very juicy. And these are the ones that graduate teaching assistantships, research assistantships fall under this category. Okay, so graduate teaching assistantships, research assistantships fall under this category. What are internal specifics? Internal specifics are scholarships that are for a particular department, you understand? And they're for particular people, or they're for in, they are internal to a, 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 a school and for particular people. So the internal specific scholarship will not just be, oh, oh, this scholarship is open to everybody. No, it will be, this scholarship is available at LSC for people from Sub-Saharan Africa, or for people who are studying jumpology, or for people who are doing so, 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 and so. And now, Emmanuel is asking what month is best to apply. I'm gonna talk about that as my last point. So internal specific scholarships, sorry, let me drink water. Internal specific scholarships are actually some of the best you can get. Because again, the pool, is smaller. So it is internal to a school. It's, it's only, you will find them in that school and it is specific to either a department or to your gender or to where you are from or something like that. Okay. Now, oh, David, you are so blessed. David now said, my question is, can a person apply for different scholarships so as not to put all eggs in one basket? Now that is the point. You must be able to apply. You understand what I'm saying? to the different levels of scholarship. So as you apply for Shevening, you've identified schools that give internal general scholarship. You've identified organizations that have external specific scholarships. You've now identified schools and programs that have internal specific scholarships. So those of you who are saying, I don't want to do a research program. I only want to do coursework. You have excluded yourself from internal specific scholarships that will give you a, an automatic scholarship once you get into the program. You have, you have cut yourself out because you don't want to do research. Don't you, have you forgotten why you, you are trying to do this in the first place? Do you understand? You can't be telling me that I need a scholarship, but nah, I don't want to do a research program. Sorry, I'm, I'm very sassy. <laughs> I don't want to do a research program, but you need a scholarship. It cannot work because you are chasing yourself away from the internal specific um, scholarships. Now the killer are the dual specific ones. These ones are, they can be either internal or external, depending. These ones are scholarships for women in STEM. If I this one is even more than dual, this one is triple. Women in STEM from Sub-Saharan Africa. I think that's like the Slumberger scholarship. Those ones there, the competition is lower because it has combined all the different characteristics that you, know, you, you have. So there's a research work to find these scholarships. And you know, if you ask me now, what's the scholarship for? Pardon me, what's the scholarship for someone should give me a course? What's the scholarship for, give me a course now? Culinary arts. Okay, culinary arts. Do you know the truth is, I actually cannot answer you. Do you understand? I can't answer you because what you need to know is what you are looking for. Why? Because I haven't looked for culinary arts before. If I, if you, if you, if I sit down and I look, I will find. 
it's a gift. I know how to do it. And I teach the strategies. But once I teach you how to search for it, you will be able to find it. And the reason why a scholarship list cannot really work for you is because you are going to be getting number one and number two. You will not be getting number three, four, and five. Am I making sense to you guys? So yes, I love the you. I love you know when we share scholarships and getting does that we share scholarships as well, you know. But it's you may not be able to find scholarships that are fitting for you because it's something that is customized. You have to search, and it's even easier to find because you know what you're looking for. Now we're talking about searching for these scholarships, and I can't go into the detail now on the the, the different ways to search, but. One thing you need to know is as you are seeing scholarships, a lot of us, we see a scholarship, the deadline has passed and you are like, ah, it has passed, eh, yeah. Do you have a scholarship tracker document? How many of you have scholarship tracker or opportunities trackers? You want to change your life, but you don't have a scholarship tracker. Do you have a scholarship tracker or an opportunity tracker? Do you have one? If you do, let me know. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. A scholarship tracker or an opportunity tracker is a document where any moment you find or identify, a, or Jova said they have a scholarship tracker from last year. Anytime you find or identify a scholarship or an opportunity, good. David said, I got it from the Get It Done 30 day program. You must impute it in that tracker, whether or not the opportunity has closed. Even if the opportunity has closed, there's no problem. You put in the date for next year and you put an alarm on your phone to let you know three to four to five months before to make sure that you apply for it in time for next year. So if you see an opportunity that has closed and you just let it go like that, you're making a mistake. I told you now, oh, I went to the World Trade Organization. Do you think it just happened? I was searching for that, that opportunity. I saw that opportunity for one year. I was like, oh my God, this has closed. It would have been so nice to go. But what did I do? I put it in my scholarship tracker, my opportunity tracker. But if they closed in March 2020, 2019, it means application would have opened in like January. I set an alarm on my phone. I set an alarm on everywhere. That's by January. And I set an alarm for every week. So every week, I go to their website to see if that opportunity has opened and then I apply. Do you understand what I'm saying? So please don't feel like, oh, an opportunity has gone, it has gone. If you see an opportunity, even if it has closed, so when you're searching for your opportunities, even the closed ones are good because they will still open again next year. Does that make sense? Good. So I hope you've been able to learn something new about scholarships and the strategy for it. You cannot be applying for only external general, internal general and say I've applied for scholarships, you've not started. Right, now let's now talk about your application documents. I don't want to keep you. Somebody said hustle mama, I'm more at hustle though. Like I'm, I'm really looking forward to resting soon because man, I really have hustled. But you you, you need to know, I, I know what I, I started with. You know, yes, I know like I, I was lucky enough, you know, to have an education and, and I'm not saying that I didn't have anything to start with. No, everybody is giving something, some one talent, five talents, 10 talents, but whatever you have, you need to be able to make the best of it. And whatever you don't have, you need to be able to know what work do I need to do? You understand? To, to get to where I'm going, how much work do I need to put in? Somebody that is, you just imagine somebody that is, something is in a shelf, the shelf is very high. If you, you are four foot tall, you have to stretch, you understand? Or actually you may need to go and get a chair to stand on, to get it. Somebody is six feet, they may just need to stretch. You can't be looking at the person that is stretching and say, ah, but it's only stretch and you, you are four feet, you are stretching. You need a chair, you understand? You need a chair. So you need to understand where you are and the work, if you know that my, the way I write my essays or more, I, I don't think I used to tabon, your work is different from somebody who knows how to write a little bit. And we talk about all this and we teach you strategies to deal with all of these. Right, so let's move. Sorry, I give tough love. I give tough love. I give tough love. This is, that's my, that's my brand is tough love, okay? Now, how do you prepare outstanding scholarship applications? There's the first thing I teach, one of the things I teach is called the one document strategy. Honestly, in this, my life, I have seen so many things. You, yes, now we're talking about writing your statement of purpose. 
we're, we're thinking of writing your application documents now. What's the one document strategy? So some of you, when you want to submit your master's or PhD application, it feels like maybe you're not really sure what you are saying. I don't know how to put it. You're not sure what you're saying. You're, your documents are telling different stories. Like if they pick your resume and then they pick your, um, if you pick your resume and then they pick your essays and then they pick your transcripts and then they pick your recommendation letter, they cannot read it as a document. It's it, they're disjointed. This is one of the biggest mistakes people make. Only you, you've taught in a primary school. Only you, you've been a hairdresser. Only wow. you, you've been an entrepreneur. Only you, you've worked as a customer service rep in a company. Only you, you've, you've, I don't know, give me more profession. You've been an astronaut. Only you, you understand? And your documents, because you are, you're not clear on your persona, which is what I'm going to talk about, your entire documents are not telling a story. Where The way you need to think about it is that your entire application needs to read as one document. It needs to read as one story. There should be no doubt in the mind of the reader that this is what this person is about. That's your biggest mistake. Oh. And what does that mean? It means that when you're writing your application, it is not every part of your life and it's not every part of your story that is relevant. One document strategy, what does that mean? It means your entire application must read as one coherent story. There must be no doubt in the admissions committee's mind of what you are saying, who you are, what you are trying to do. Your recommendation letter cannot be talking about something else and your essays are talking about something else it will not work get that if you don't take anything from this place let it be that when if there are documents if there are documents right you know let it be that if your cv lands here and your essay lands here if they read it separately they can tell who it belongs to that's the one. That's when you know that you've succeeded with the one document strategy. I have a very special offer for you guys at the end of the session, so please don't go. And guess what? I still have so much to teach you. Okay. Now we'll talk about that later. I still have so much to teach. You. I still have so many questions to answer. So please stay tuned. Don't don't you you. Hmm. Okay. Don't let me talk too much. I have a lot to. I have a lot to give you guys. Now the second thing is your personal statement. Please, let's mute ourselves if we haven't. Your personal statements and letters of motivation should tell a compelling story about yourself and your ambitions. They should showcase you as a worthy investment for the admission and scholarship bodies. Now, this is the mis another mistake most people make. When you're writing your application, somehow you feel as if you are begging. When you're writing an application, the way we do it, it is that the school must think that if we don't admit this student, we've made a mistake. That's the approach. You understand? That is the approach. Your letters of motivation must tell a story about you and your ambition. And they must say that, you know what? We want to be part of this person's story. We, or whatever university you want to, to call it, right? And I'm going to talk about the MBA. There's somebody, I'm sorry to... I have to take this question because I tell you the real, the real. I don't, I don't deceive anybody. If you know that you want to go for an MBA, be ready to pay part of the money. I won't deceive you because an MBA is the kind of program, you understand what I'm saying? There are some full scholarships and if you get one, fantastic. But at the back of your mind, if you are going for an MBA or you understand? Have it in mind that you must be able to pay for part of it or take a loan. And that's on period. Because the way the MBAs work, the structure of an MBA is that most of the time your company will be paying for you or you are going to, they anticipate that you're going to get a great job after and you should be able to pay the student loan. If you are looking for a fully funded MBA, I say this everywhere. I don't have any, I don't have any reason to give you, to deceive you. You have to be ready to pay 
part of it, a significant part of it. So for MBA, yes, you can get part funded. You may not be able to get full funded and you may, but just have it in mind, just so nobody will deceive you. Now, if you know that you don't have any money for MBA, you need to go and look for research-based MSc in management. And this is what we're talking about, about choice of course. Every year, every year you're applying for programs. You're not getting it, you're not getting money. You're applying for the wrong program. Oh, don't let me go into this. Let me close the chats and come back to the questions. Now, your letters of motivation should tell a story about yourself and your ambitions. And it's not just about what I've done. I went to school, I did this. The best way people know what you have, what you can do is by what you have already achieved. And you need to be able to use that to now show what you will achieve in the future. You're not a beggar. A lot of us from developing countries, we have like an inferiority complex where we think the things we've done are not good enough. And we show you how to package and sell what you have done in a way that you know shows that, look, if this person has been able to achieve this much with this little, guess what they will be able to achieve when they have so much more. And it doesn't mean you would have, you've done so much. No, even sometimes when I talk to clients, I, I will be telling them, oh, you know, this, 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 that, 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 you know, did you do this? Did you? They say, oh, it's true. I did this. I did that. And then they're now able to write an essay that is more compelling. So bear it in mind, this thing is competitive. If they're going to give you funding, they're seeing it as an investment. You must be a good return on investment. Now, three, your CV should signal value to these schools and corroborate all that you have submitted. Now we have some strategies that I teach in the bootcamp. I have the card strategy, I have the ideal strategy. You know, the ideal strategy is for your essays, the card strategy is for your entire application. And we also have the prepare strategy. And I teach you step-by-step, step. you understand what I'm saying? How to come up with all these documents. Now your CV should signal values to the school and corroborate all that you have submitted. Your CV is not just about, I provided assistance to this person. Right? Even if you provided assistance, to what end? For what purpose? How are you deciding the things that go into your CV? The, the way it works is that when you're talking, when you have your resume or you, or you have your CV and when you have your essay, they should be able to see, oh, this is the place where this person got that experience they talked about in their essay. It's that's brilliant. They must be able to see that, okay, this is where they, they were talking about, and this is this is what the experience they were talking about that they elaborated upon in the statement of purpose. That's your, the work of your CV. The work of your CV is not to just say the schools you've gone to. The work of your CV is to continually convince them, right, with metrics and numbers and clear achievements of some of the things that you've talked about in your resume, in your, in your statement of purpose, or to project and associate you with some organizations that are so powerful. And I teach you the strategy for this, that they know that, you know, this person is worthy to be in our midst. Your CV is like your bragging card. It's not just, you cannot, your CV cannot be random. It's a place where you brag. And if you say, oh, but I've not done so much, there's a blueprint for how you can, you know, ramp up your CV to be able to make sure that it is showing the kind of things that people want to read. Now, the fifth thing, your recommendation letters from your teachers and employers, it should show your growth over time and provide detailed insights about, insights about your strengths, abilities, and, and abilities. So the first question is, who is going to write your recommendation letter? A lot of us, one thing I found out recently is that some people are shy to ask for a recommendation letter. Can I remind you of your reason for doing what you are doing? You can't be shy. And the only challenge is that you we are asking for a recommendation letter one week before it is due. You need to start talking to whoever is going to be your going to write your recommendation letter. You start talking to them from now. If you've not talked to them in a long time, this is the time to send them a gift and just ah, greet them, yes sir, yes ma, so that when it's time to write the recommendation, it's not going to be a problem. And if your recommendation letters, one of the things I recommend for people to do, you know, when you're giving your when you're you're asking for a recommendation letter is to send your recommend your 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 the person who's going to do your recommendation a draft send them a draft because they are busy because that's the only way you cannot control what they say but you can help them to say the kinds of things that will flow with your general story and now the mistake you make and i teach this in the boot camp is what kind of draft are you sending there are some drafts recommendation letters that should not be sent to anybody because they don't under you're not under you're not demonstrating an understanding of the purpose of a recommendation letter. 
right? But a draft recommendation letter, if you follow the steps that I teach, should be able to show your growth, insights about your strengths and your abilities, and should be able to make you stand out. One of the reasons why I got into U of T was on the strength of some of my recommendation letters, and I know it. Okay. Also, the people who write your recommendation letters are very important. Not only the people, but the way they title themselves and the way they address themselves is important. So if you're a lawyer, again, your recommendation letter is from, let's say, a senior associate. And they just write senior associate. They don't write that they're the head of the capital markets team in a leading, you know, law firm, or they are recognized as the IFLR, you know, so, so, and so in a particular place. How do the people who are reading recommendation that I want to know the, 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 the swag of the person who is telling you, is recommending you to them? You know what I'm saying? Or your recommend, the person who is giving you a recommendation has gone to one of these top schools and they're not putting their titles in the, in the, in the recommendation letter. Does it make sense? They have to put it. It's those small little things. You say, oh, this person, oh, this person also came, went to our school. The person who is recommending also went to our school. That's a strategy that works. Now, I'm so sorry. Uh, I hope I'm not moving too fast. Now, number six, you know I talked about the persona. You have a unique story. You should own it, sell your values and strengths to the admissions committee. I see some essays that anybody can, it's, it, if you give me that essay, it can be my essay. Oh, when I was young, I always had a passion for mathematics. And so, and so my passion for mathematics, I, I, I always did well in school to ensure that I did well in, in mathematics. After I finished, now I, I want to use mathematics to solve global problems. That is not a unique story. That is not a unique story. And I know that this is the most difficult part. When I used to work one-on-one -on -one with people, you know, I can spend one week thinking about the introduction of an essay because it must start to tell that unique story from the beginning. So if you want to start with, when I was six, I went to a museum and I was fascinated and I became, and I'm not saying that's a bad story, right? Sometimes you can use that kind of story. I love historical stories, but there's a way to tell them right? There's a way to tell them, there's a way to make your story come alive. And these are things that I, I teach, right? Um, so you have to know your story, you have to own it, and you have to sell your values and your strengths to the admissions committee. Again, you are not begging, you have something. You already have something. You may not believe it is something, but it's something. Now, number seven, I want to tell you, if you don't pick anything, I'm about to kneel down, please. If you don't pick anything today, pick this. You need to demonstrate awareness of trends, people, and issues, especially for those of you who are writing research-based proposals. And this is something that I've even just learned over the past few years. What is happening in your field if you don't know? If you don't know, chances are low. And yes, there's a lot of reading involved. You need to demonstrate awareness of trends, people, and issues. And how to use this, I, I, would, I, I would teach you. But for people, if you're writing a research proposal and you're talking about, let's say, water quality, and you don't know the people in the world, you know the academics in the world who are in front of the water quality issue, or you don't know that the United Nations or the World Bank just released one crazy report you know, updating the statistics on water, poly, on water quality, blah, blah, blah. Or you're not aware, you understand what I'm saying, of so, so and so issues. Now, it doesn't mean your entire research is going to be centered on water quality. I, I'm sorry, on that particular issue. But there's some sentences you're going to insert here and there to let them realize that this person actually knows what is going on. And this person has thought about it and has a solution to add. Right, and this takes me to my last point, always go giving. When they read your application, they must, I want you to, especially those of you who are gonna do research programs, and not even research programs, even for MBA. So if I were to write an MBA application from a, as a Nigerian, for example, I'm not gonna talk about how, oh, Nigeria is the biggest economy in Africa. Yeah, it's gonna be there in passing, but the kind of story I'm going to tell about that person is how I can start my 
my answer is something like, if you can succeed at business in Nigeria, you probably, you, you know, you would probably do that anywhere in the world. And you cannot talk about the challenges associated with, you know, the, with running a business in, in Nigeria in a humorous way. And I teach all these strategies as well, right? To let them know that, oh, oh, you can start even with a dramatic, a, a dramatic way and talk about, you know, power outage, this, that, that, founder issues, this, that, that, and then yet, I was able to make X, X, Y, Z in revenue. Now, if you've been able to do that in such a challenging environment, how much more will you be able to achieve when you have access to that MBA program? That is an MBA candidate that will get funding. Not, I've always been interested in business. Business has the opportunity to change the trajectory of the life of so many people from developing countries. No, always go giving. When they read your essay, the people who are giving the admission, right? They want to even they want to they want you in their class so that you can give them the gist. You can give them the tea of how things are working in your country, you know, of how things are working in that in that in, in that environment. So you have information that they don't have. You have lived experiences that they cannot even you know they cannot even even imagine. And it is for you to put in those lived experiences to draw them in and say, you know what, this is unique. This is the kind of perspective that will contribute to the diversity of our class. I hope some of these examples are making sense to you. I hope you're able to adapt it to your own circumstance. Okay, so always go giving. You have something to teach them. You have something to tell them. If it is malaria you've been dealing with in Nigeria, if you've been dealing with malaria, you in your essay, you can't just talk about malaria. You must talk about the fact that sometimes cultural or maybe a disease, you talk about how cultural influences in certain communities increase or reduce the outcome, the health outcomes of people. They don't understand what those cultural influence, influences are. So they want you in their program so you can contribute and show them. Does that make sense? And I talk about other things like, you know, having a global approach, like, you know, oh my God, there's so much to say. And I really, really said I was gonna, how many hours have you spent here? I, I have to wrap up now. There's something like, and thank you so much for staying for so long. There's something like having a global approach to your work. It is global and local. All of you who are writing research proposal, you want to research how the constitution of Nigeria affects the life of the people, but you want a school all the way in Nebraska to fund you for that research. Why should they do that? Your work is local, it's not global. You understand? You can decide to either be global or local, or you are writing a research on water quality, you want to do a research on water quality in one rural area, but you're not connecting it to the bigger water quality challenges, to the global water quality challenges, you're making a mistake and you will not be attractive. Does that make sense? So the, the, the place you want to be is at the intersection of global and local. And just if you think you don't have anything, just your local knowledge is enough to make you stand out from Ho Chi in Korea, from Claire in England, from anybody else everywhere else, because that is unique to you. So I hope this has been able to help you to think. I can't go into detail, like the bootcamp is extremely detailed and I'm just giving you a very, an overview of what can help you, you know, to get started. Good stuff. Now, if you have low grades, I know this is a common challenge. I'm so sorry. If you have low grades, I need you to understand that you're gonna work very hard. That's the truth, but it's not an impossible work. Do you understand? And I do have a blueprint for people who have low grades, what you need to do. It's is work, but you can do it. You can do it. And once you do it, you will forget the work. So the first thing is that your essays are a game changer. Your regular essays, and also your supplemental essays. I know people with tutus, passes, who have gotten scholarships, but you are most likely going to be looking for a thesis-based program. And you will also be looking at non-traditional destinations. So while you will apply to Canada and the US, you would also need to apply to Amsterdam, apply to um, the Netherlands, pardon me. Good destinations too. You're also gonna need to apply to Estonia as a backup plan. And that doesn't mean that's where you're going to end up. You understand, but the strategy for you, if you have low grades, is your essays must be a game changer. 
they must be able to say you just need a game changer to show what you've done and if you've not done much then this is why i talk about the blueprint how you can do much in a short amount of time right and turn around what you, you look like on paper you will do the work you understand your essays will be a game changer you need to show more than your cgpa you understand that well i didn't have a high cgp over here are other things that i've done you need to be looking out for thesis based programs and your ability to conduct that research right those are two interconnected things then you need to look for non-traditional destinations you also need to be very 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 detailed and in-depth about those hidden scholarship opportunities the dual specific the internal specific the external specific those are the kinds you need to be looking for why because the internal general the external general they're going to want to give the people with high grades most likely you understand except you are able to get your story to be compelling and show your achievements and your um potential through other quantifiable means okay so i have a blueprint if you have a tutu right and below you will do the work but you will see results and it can be a game changer let me tell you one last thing for every year that you leave the university your grades whether you have a first class or you have a pass your grades are irrelevant like it's as if it starts fading so yes maybe when you leave uni your grades is all you have and people have to look at them to be able to judge you right but for every minute so if you've been out of school for three years and your problem is that oh i can't get a master's a scholarship because of my grades you're not doing you're not doing something right because in those three years you've had the opportunity to reverse in quotes those grades and make yourself competitive that's what i will tell you today now can i see if you have learned something you know because i'm trying not to look at the chat can i see if you've um learned something can i see if you've learned something okay so you've learned you've learned a lot i'm very glad fantastic fantastic that's my that is my goal learn something implement what you have learned now once upon a time right when we just started getting i used to help clients one-on-one -on -one to secure scholarships right but we actually don't do this anymore why imagine if you know i used to work one-on-one -on -one with clients look at their documents and all of that it was very tough it was very tough to say you know what we don't do this anymore why because the demand was too much the demand was just too much from several African countries as people are emailing us from Ghana, they're emailing us from Nigeria, they're emailing us from Uganda. And while I love it, you know, I love helping, I love that. I said, you know what, I can only reach so many people at, you know, if I imagine if I'm having a one-on-one -on -one meeting with you, I won't be able to meet with the hundreds of people who are here right now. So what I decided to do and what my team decided to do was to create the graduate school application bootcamp. And the way you look, you should look at that bootcamp is as if I am working with you step by step to show you how we've gotten the results for people, right? It is pretty much the entire blueprint. It is like my brain, the brain of my team, plus years of experience downloaded into a process that if you follow, you understand what I'm saying, to the T, it's as if we've written your application for you. It's a step-by-step -step process that we put our one-on-one -on -one clients to, just that you're doing it by yourself and the modules are very easy. We have workbooks, we have questions that will give you prompts. If you say you don't know how to write your, your essay, if you, you need to come to the essay writing portion of the bootcamp. Before you know it, you are trying to cut the words that you have because it's too much. You know, so this year we've changed our model and what we're doing is you're going to get access to a bootcamp and you're also going to get a community of like-minded people people who are ready if you're not ready you understand what i'm saying like i i don't know how else i can say it like people who are ready to change their stories right so even if your ginger is tired by the time you see that somebody has gotten a response from a supervisor like your head self will spark you're ready to move right so we'll also be hosting live sessions during this um during the boot camp from time to time to answer questions so all the teaching is done in the boot camp and the live sessions would be you know to answer pressing questions now please stay because i do have an offer for you that you do not want to miss it. it's not going to be to find this away with everybody there thanks sorry please do my muting yourself and it will not be available the offer will 
will not be available, you know, outside of this setting. Now, I just want to let you know that, as I discussed before, if I had, you know, I've achieved a lot over the past few years, but sometimes I'm like, oh, more, if I knew some of the things that I know now, you know, and not in the bootcamp, we're not even just talking about how to get into school. We're even talking about your career strategy after. The mistake I made when I went to Cambridge, I went to Cambridge and came back to, to, to Nigeria. I didn't even have a job. Ah, that should not be your portion. Because I wasn't smart enough to realize that going to Cambridge was not enough. There's another strategy for what you need to be doing while you are in school. You understand? We talk about that too. Right, because for me, the goal is to have people like you in top places in the world. Have you at the World Bank? Have you at the IMF? Have you in, you know, the top companies all over the world? So the first step is your education. And I always like to show stories. You guys have been hearing about me, 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 Mary. I'm like, oh, Mary, but you did well in school, blah, 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 blah. You did it. But I want to tell you about other people who are not me. Oh, where's my pen? Stories, right? Please, do you mind, let, let's mute ourselves if it's possible, please. These are real stories. This is somebody who was like me, who thought that the first class was all he needed. So he had a first class in engineering and was like, oh, more, Don Chichi. Three years, they didn't get anything. And in 2020, they did our boot camp and realized all the mistakes that they were making. And the same month after the boot camp, they applied for a master's in the US. And after seven weeks, they got a scholarship with a graduate assistantship for a taught master's program in a top 30 university without GRE results. This is not my own story. This is someone that I taught through the bootcamp, right? This is somebody that after three years, they were tired. They said, I can't keep doing, paying application fee over and over and over again. This person got a full tuition waiver. That is, they didn't pay any school fees at University of Lafayette with a graduate research assistantship with monthly stipend. Basically, they will be paying you to go to school right so these are real people who came to the boot camp put in the work got a fully funded phd to the university of coventry if you know the uk you know that a lot of people pay for their phds in the uk right so to get a funded phd in the uk is a big deal now this story i don't sugarcoat anything i tell you as it is this person was actually in the first boot camp that we ran in person. And for the past few years, I've been in touch with her off and on, you know? And when she was about to, she applied a few years back or last year or so, she got in, she got some scholarships, you know, from different schools, but she didn't do some things right. So I was asking her, when did you send your application? She said, eh, I sent it as so so and so so. I said, which schools did you pick? She said, eh, I picked these schools and these schools and these schools. I said, did you do this thing that I told you? She said, eh, I, I said, why? I've told you everything you need to do to change, to, to, to get in. Why aren't you doing it? And I was like, this year, I'm going to be on your neck. She got into Harvard this year. She doesn't have a first class. She does not have a first class. So what does that mean? It also means that when I teach you, there's something you need to do. You need to implement to the T. Don't pick and choose what you do. Just say, well, if she said this is what I should do, let me do it. And just customize it to your situation. She got into Harvard and she is going this year by God's grace, right? So I need you to understand that it is possible. I will not deceive you. You're going to make an investment in yourself, not even in terms of what you're going to pay to join the boot camp, but in terms of your time. In terms of your efforts, in fact, that is even the bigger investment. In terms of engaging on the assignments we're going to give you, you understand what I'm saying? In terms of looking for, tell, us telling you this is where you find the answer and going to check. This is somebody else. This scholarship, 25,000 NYU. Harvard gave that 96,000 out of 103,000. 75K graduate grants, so, 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 and so, and part-time employment. One person. In fact, when we say we help people get over $2 million in scholarship, I just laugh at my team because it is bad record keeping. It is probably closer to $4 million, but we can't get everybody's data. And when you get your scholarship, I want you to, can you chat that I promise I will let you know, because some of you, you will get the scholarship, you will just run, you will just disappear. We'll just see that your Instagram pictures have changed. You will not tell me that Miriam, see you, thank you, mm -mm. but it's okay. My own reward is, is, is my, my reward is your, your success, right? That is my reward. So look at this. 
you know there's so many opportunities and so many ways you can actually use education to achieve your dreams now what's the big announcement mona why are you writing on my screen don't do that we're enjoying ourselves you know let's make the experience good for everyone right so what's the big announcement well the boot camp is back and it's even better right we have several practical lessons to teach you how to get into your dream school with scholarships you're going to get an accountability group this is the first time that we're instituting we've had accountability groups online like email accountability groups but this is the first time you're going to get a real accountability group with a class right you'll be in a cohort and that cohort i have a target of 10 million dollars scholarship for that class and i want you to be there you understand i want your number to be part of that, I want the, this, this cohort that is starting in June 12, what the amount of money that I want us to win in scholarships is $10 million. Do you understand me? So I'm looking for people who want to say, this is my own contribution to the $10 million. I got scholarship out of 250K, bam. That's my goal for this year, $10 million in scholarships. And not only that, if you're gonna sign up and I'm gonna explain to you we're currently having an early bird price and i'm going to answer your questions right i'm going to answer your questions for sure we're having an early bird price of forty thousand naira only and i'm going to be very deliberate about something look at the price of this bootcamp. forget the, because of exchange rates we this is our exchange rates the 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 the, the, the distance is too volatile everybody that i've spoken to because i'm also this is a, getting the social enterprise right what does that mean it means that we, we have biz, we have this business so that we can do good, so that we can help people achieve their dreams. That's why we do it. Every business consultant that I've spoken to has told me, you need to increase the price of your bootcamp to not less than $500. Everybody, but I always say that, I don't think I'm ever going to increase it beyond $100. Why? Because $100 is the fee you pay for one university application. And it's strategic. $100 is the fee you pay for one university application. What is the point of paying $500 for five university applications? You understand what I'm saying? When you can pay $400 for one university application, $100 for a bootcamp that will help you ensure that your $400 goes far. So I said, if this person, if anybody is applying for grad school, you understand what I'm saying? They must have saved or be able to save $100. And that's why it has never gone beyond $100. You understand it has never gone beyond a hundred dollars so now if you know that you want to go to school either in 2022 or 2023 you understand or even 2024 if you are here and you are still in school you're an undergraduate in fact you are blessed because there are some other things you can do now while you've not even left school that can prepare you you understand your approach in terms of the accountability group will be different you get because you're not applying in that cycle but you need to know what we're teaching ASAP, so that you can start making some strategic decisions, right? So that is why this is at this price. And for now, if you take the early bed price by May 20, which is ending by May 20, you get to pay 40,000 Naira or $80. But after May 20, it launches on June 12. After May 20, it goes back to $100. And to make it better, if you take the early bed price, there's a resource that we've already prepared for you and what the resource is is it has some of the top critical sop mistakes that people make in their sops mistakes that i'm tired of seeing all the time mistakes that you know you cannot keep making in your sops we have them in this document and not only that we now show you what you should be saying but this is available only to those who take up this early bird pricing and my team is going to put the link in the chat you should be able to Please, if you send a, a question, don't send it to me directly because I'm not collating them. Just send it to the general chat so that everybody else can also see your question. I'm very happy to answer and I will be answering the questions. Um, so, Alison, why are you writing on my screen? <laughs> so, I want you to... I want you to... Can you hear me? Great. So, I hope you can join us. I really hope you can join us. What are the things that you're going to be getting? You're going to be getting a whole lot, you know? we don't just say oh just go to any school you know pick any school there's actually a diagnostic exercise that you have to fill in information to determine the kind of school that you should be looking at 
prepare practical lessons to help you build a competitive persona, to help you to write a unique story and your achievements. You will learn how to write an excellent CV. Literally, we teach you everything about the CV from even how you should write your, your, your name. Do you understand? All the way to the end, like nothing is missing. You would know exactly what to do. Should you have you know, a, an intro? If so, what should be there? You're gonna learn three frameworks that I teach the card, the ideal, and the prepare frameworks. And you will also learn practical strategies to write compelling, um, you know, essays for your research proposal, your statement of purpose, and so on and so forth. So things like application fee waivers, we also discuss the strategies to secure internships, you know, to have a career that you are really, really going to be proud of. We talk about everything in the bootcamp. It is a complete package. If you've been able to learn this much, from this session can you imagine what would be in the boot camp like i cannot wait to have you so please bear in mind that the, you can click on this if you check the chat you will see the link the early bird price closes may 20 and it goes to a hundred dollars and after that you know you will not, if you if you pay after may 20 you won't be able to get this 20 critical sop mistakes unfortunately it's only available for those who are ready to take this early action so i really do hope i see you in class um i as i say this is an investment you know what you're trying to achieve you get what i'm saying you know what you're trying to achieve you know why this is important to you why do it without the right guidance why do why not do it with your full chest you understand if i had this I say that, yes, I've achieved a lot too, but if I had this, my God, where I would have been by now, I really cannot even imagine it. So I want you guys, and one of the things I tell everybody who comes to the bootcamp is you must be better than me because you know these things now. You must be better. That's my goal, that you become better. You achieve more than I've ever achieved. You understand? So I really hope you're taking action. Go to the chat. The early bread price closes closes on May 20. After that, it will not go back, please. It won't go back. So I'm ready to answer your questions now. And, and I'm going to answer the questions that I think can be beneficial to everyone. This is also, we have to learn, we have to learn, you know, that some things are, you know, are, so I'm, my team, if you can just send me some of these questions. So if you're asking me for a very specific question, you know, for like, oh, what's the very specific scholarship for this specific program? I can't tell you because you know what to look out for. And you need to use the, the internal specific, the external, uh, the internal specific, the dual specific, and the external specific. Okay, someone said, how do you get funding after being offered admission? No. Oh, I don't do that. I personally do not believe in that. If you do the bootcamp, your funding strategy should be in place before your, you even get admission. You cannot be having admission, you understand, without, without funding. Is that one even admission? Especially if you know you need funding. If you are able, if you know that funding is a priority to you, your decision-making process from the beginning will put you in a position where when your admission comes in, you have funding. So I personally, if people come to me and say, I don't have funding, you know, I have my admission, I tell them the fundamental mistake has been made from the beginning. You understand? And sometimes it's difficult to rectify. So there are some funding opportunities that may be open, for example, and I'll tell you for free. For example, if you are trying to apply to the UK, there's the Black, Black Heart Foundation Scholarship, you know, for the um, US, uh, you know, for if you're a woman, the AAWU, you know, there's the PEO, there are a couple of those, but if it is at this time you're looking, they are closed. That's the truth, they are closed. So when I tell, when I tell people that you need to plan this thing from over a year ahead, it's like, why is this person so extra? It's so that you're not going to be in that position of looking for funding. It's painful, I've been there. I've been there and I don't want people to go through it. It's painful. When I got my, my Cambridge paper, I didn't have a scholarship first. And I knew how I felt. But thankfully, I had done my internal specific. So I was just waiting for that to come through. And it did. So please, can you put the link to the boot camp so that we can, anybody who's interested in taking the early action can do that. Now, somebody says, um, can the deadline for the early bird boot can be considered until the end of May? No, I'm sorry. It closes on May 20. We really need to know those who are very eager so that we can send them this document as well. It closes on May 20, please. I'm so sorry. Um, so someone says, pardon me. 
Ojoba said, I have not seen so many schools that offer my course. What is your course? International Humanitarian Action. I've served all over the internet. Is that, ah oh gosh, there's so much that you guys need to learn. Is that, is International Humanitarian Action the only course on this earth that will help you achieve what you want to achieve? And this is why I spend a lot of time in the boot camp teaching you how to choose your courses and how you can still achieve what you want to achieve without you know, going for the course that you think is the best course. So no, even if you can't find anything, number one, there are two solutions for you. You need to learn how to search for the programs and I teach that in the bootcamp. And number two, you now also need to decide whether that's actually the best program for you. If you graduated with a third class, yes, you can obtain scholarships. You have to use the blueprint and there is a work that is involved and I will tell you what to do. And if you do it faithfully and you take the time to do it, you are likely to get a good offer. I'm just gonna answer questions for the next 10 minutes. I can't believe we've always almost been here for two hours. Can someone get a graduate assistantship without a research publication? You can. Um, so someone says, how would the bootcamp run specifically? I think this is a brilliant question. So the bootcamp, it's, a, it's, it's an online course where you actually will get your login details you can decide to watch it every night for three weeks you know and then you now join the accountability group so you will get all the resources all the documents everything you need and you have me teaching you live like this you know in the online course so it's on your time you don't have to attend at a particular date and time like this i know we all have busy schedules we're all in different time zones as you can see people from all over the world are here so um so what about the scholarship that requires applicants to secure admissions first? So that's true. There are scholarships like that, but those are the kind of scholarships that you also do not want to put your entire mind on, okay? Um, so Eunice said three offers, no funding. That's because the strategy is wrong from the beginning. You get the strategy is wrong from the beginning. So someone said, I did research for schools that offer energy law LLM in Canada, discovered only Calgary and Osgood, Putting hard guy aside, I'm scared that if I do not, I'm scared that I do not fit because I haven't done so much related to the level of energy law. And looking up to you and people like Dr. Reginald, I feel like I'm way over my head. No, funny thing, Reginald and I actually did NYSC together. I knew Reginald before KEB, he went to Cambridge and Oxford. Reginald knew me before I went to Cambridge and Toronto. And the truth is, we were just like you. We started just like you. We didn't become Dr. Reginald or Dr. Momodu overnight. It started by taking the right steps. So don't feel inadequate. Don't feel that way. We didn't, we were not born. Nobody was born as, you know, Miriam Cambridge LLM. No, you go step by step, process by process. So please don't feel that way. You understand? Some of you have pigeonholed yourself mentally. And so therefore you are limiting your opportunities. And that's one of the things you need to liberate yourself from. Right. So I'm looking at the questions. Um, how do I write a letter to supervisor whose current work is not correlated with my undergrad research work? We talk about all this in the book. Camp. How to reach out to supervisors. If I let me tell you a story of someone. Sorry, oh, the people who I've left, oh, ah, they're missing hot gist. Now, I remember a few years ago, and I, this is somebody who I'm so proud of because I cannot even announce the kind of job that this person got last year. I can't tell you. The person is a lawyer. The person has gotten a job in one of the best, I won't say whether it's a law firm organization, the person has gotten a job in one of the best organizations in Canada, like top three kind of thing. How did this person start? They did a boot camp. Now, they now said, they now wrote, so they, they, they submitted their research proposal and everything. I now asked them, I said, look, how far, where is your admission letter, what's happening? And they said that, Oh, eh, well, they told me that somebody, somebody is, is preparing, you know, is reading my application and will get back to me. And I now told them, I said, pardon me. And I'm asking you a question about writing to someone who is not correlated with the undergraduate research work. And I now said, so what have you done with this information that you've been given? And the person said, nothing. I said, you need to write them an email quickly. This person wrote an email. We, I gave a few pointers, you know, which I teach in, in, in the bootcamp. And the person sent the email. And the next day, I kid you not, if I am exaggerating this, you know, God, God is seeing me. The next day, they got an admission offer. The guy didn't even respond to the email. But what that email did, you, you, don't, you can't be going begging. I'm telling you, you need to be able to, I've talked about how 
you you need to be able to know what's going on in your research and you need to have something to offer that email showed what they had to offer so if you are already feeling deficient that this person's work is not correlated to my undergraduate research work how can you make yourself correlated to their own work how can you make them feel excited about the potential of working with you you understand and i teach this step by step so the, trust me i feel like a lot of things people think is impossible because maybe they just don't know how to do it or they're scared or they're not ready to put in the work but if any of those those don't apply to you you are good to go okay um someone says how do i level up because i just want to be successful and have a good career because now there are different ways to level up for everybody it's not actually school but for me i know that school works school a master's in, you know, anywhere. It is one of the easiest ways. If you don't know people, if you don't have connections, it's one of the easiest ways to change your life. Especially when you go on a scholarship, it's one of the easiest ways. So the bootcamp, it is mostly an online, it's mostly online and the accountability group. And we will have one or two, you know, Q&A sessions to see what challenges people are facing in the middle. So we'll have a session like a family, I like call this family meeting. We'll have a family meeting like this where I'm going to give you hot hot. Where if you're asking some questions, if I'll tell you are, ah, but didn't you see this in the boot camp? Where we come together, we rally around and we figure out what the challenges are and we see what we can do to support you. So most of these scholarships are for research and PhD holders. I've done my research still on it. Um, do you mean like Yes, PhDs, they, there's quite a lot of scholarships, but there's a lot of research master's programs. If you are, again, if you are saying that you don't want to do research, you're not ready for a scholarship, oh, just FYI. So let's not come with that. Don't you remember what I talked about? The person that has to stretch high is different from the person that needs a stool. If you need a you might need a stool, you understand? So please. Um, So if you have a gap in your studies, we can talk about that. Um, I'm looking for more questions. Um, um, thank you for this. Okay, I've seen this question. Um, so how can when can I apply for scholarship if I'm expected to graduate around 2022? It depends on how you want to, where you want to go. Personally, I applied for mine when I was doing my NYSE, and I also encourage most of you to do your NYSE. If you're in Nigeria, NYSE is like one year youth service thing because sometimes when you actually go to school, there's some opportunities that are gonna open up for you and you don't want to have anything holding you back. You don't want to have anything saying, I've not done this, I've not done that. But doing your NYSE doesn't mean you cannot enroll in the bootcamp because it is while you, the things you've learned, you understand during the bootcamp that you will now apply when you are, you will now deploy when you're applying, you understand, to school. So please, I did all of my work while I was in my NYSE year. So if you're in final year, it's perfect for you to enroll in the bootcamp. If you're in pre-final year, it's perfect for you to enroll because the way you're going to treat the last few years of your university, trust me, <laughs> is going to be different. And if you're an undergraduate student here, I told you, getting cares about you. We have a program called the undergraduate course and it's actually free. And it's for, to help you prepare so that when it's time for you to be going for your master's, things are so easy for you. Yes, the schedule of the boot camp is extremely flexible. Um, this webinar is fire. I'm, I hope you get to get the early bed price before our slots are full. We have only a limited number of slots for the early bed price. And if those slots are filled before May 20, there's really, literally my team is like texting me, like, let them know that there's a limited number of slots. Please. I, I, I know some of you guys come into my DM. There's only so much I can do. Like my team, do you think I'm the guy? They're actually my guys. So please, if you can take this offer, just take the offer. And if not, if for any reason you can't, whatever I've taught you today, just hold it in your left hand. Don't use it to eat. There are people who have come for my, you know, if I have like an IG live and they say, this is what changed my application for me. You understand? So, but I prefer for you to get even more because the level of detail in that bootcamp, I don't think there's anybody, you understand, who does it like we do. And my goal is to make the the biggest places in the world, the, 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 the highest levels in the world, I want to make them populated with people like you, people that look like me. That's my goal. So you will get the recording later. Um, 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 I, I'm really trying to go through as many questions as possible. 
So for the end, the, the, the registration for the entire bootcamp closes on June 11 because we start on June 12, okay? It closes on June 11, it starts on June 12. The SOP cheat book, will it be accessible after the discount period? Okay, we'll, we'll, think, we'll, I'll think, we'll think about it, but I really wanted this to be available for those who want to start early, who really want to see, you know, who really want to get to work as soon as possible. Um, so I'm still looking at comments. Oh my God, there are almost 99 comments and we have to end. I said 10 minutes, already over 10 minutes. I'm sorry if I don't take your question, it's not intentional. I'm really going to be doing my best. Um, how do you decide what course to apply for if you're not totally clear about your long-term goals? This is a brilliant question. And this is, I tell you, I spend a lot of time talking about your school course and country. Who is holding you? What's your goal? Sometimes you, you, we, are, we are too idealistic. What is your goal? We talked about it at the beginning. If your goal is to japa, excuse me, which one concerns japa with long-term plan? Your short-term plan is what should be motivating you. You'll be figuring out your long-term plan when you japa. Do you understand? So just pick the one where you know that there's opportunity for scholarships and you know that you can do the work and, and keep moving. So think about your goal very clearly. Don't be too rigid. You understand? Don't be too rigid. Okay. Um, can one apply for TOEFL or IELTS waiver? And I'm also going to be very honest. Your um, application to your schools depends on what the school is asking for. So I cannot tell you now that, oh, don't worry. No matter the school you want to go to, you know, apply for TOEFL. You know, if, don't we know that we need to do work? You understand? If your school has said they need IELTS, you must give it to them and you must score a high score. But we are, there are schools where you can request for either application waivers, waivers of all of these things. And we actually do talk about that as well. Um, so for this person who is talking about accounting and finance, that's what I'm talking about, your choice of course. So if you have seen that accounting, I would say that because it's probably in the business school. Business schools, they're very stingy. You understand? If you know that there's no scholarship for accounting or finance, sis, bro, you need to change your course. If money is what you need, you need to change your course. MSc management is funded. MSc management, research-based MSc management, it is funded in almost every school. So I don't know, you know, why you will be stuck on an area where you know there's no money. Let's follow the money, where the money resides. Like if you can afford to pay, fine. But if you can't, you know, um, um, I'm really, really, really trying. Um, so if you really want us to talk, you know, you can DM us, right? You can DM us on Instagram and all of that. We'll really be happy to answer questions. But most importantly, please, you know, I want you to, and thank you for sticking with me so far. Most importantly, guys, I want you to make a promise to yourself. And I want you to write this in the chat. I promise I will not give up. And I'm going to remove my glasses so that we're seeing each other eye to eye. I want you to write, we are at getting edu on Instagram and on Twitter. I want you to write, I promise I won't give up. Whether or not you join the bootcamp, you know, whether or not you join the bootcamp, and if you know the work that we've been doing over the years, joining is not going to be a problem for you. You'll be like, I can't wait to join these guys. Whether or not you join the class, and I hope you join, the most important thing for me is don't give up. I promise I will not give up. There is an opportunity for you if you persist and if you work. It's okay to be misunderstood. Let them misunderstand you when you're on, your, when you're on the plane. You understand what I'm saying? To, for your masters, we can be talking about that. But just don't give up. Whatever investment you need, make it. If it's with getting, it's great. If it's not, it's okay. If your investment is time, set time aside. I've told you my story. I was leaving my office 11 p.m. steady for months. I had no life because I knew what I wanted. I said, this PhD, I must go. This master's, I must go. I remember when I was applying for my master's, I was working in one of the busiest law firms in Nigeria. I said, lie, lie, I won't submit this application. I must submit. I didn't give up. And my story would not be what it is now if I, have give, if I had given up. So please don't give up. If you know that you need support, you understand what I'm saying? There's a lot of work to do. Yes, there's a lot of work to do. 
Don't be submitting applications that are not going to take you anywhere. Don't do that. You will just be break demoralizing yourself. You'll be demoralizing yourself. So let me switch this off so that we can see each other face to face. Stop share. You know, you'll be demoralizing yourself. There's a lot of work to be done, but just don't give up. That's all I have to say to you. So I really hope you have, how do you guys feel now after this session? I want you to tell me, tell me, what was, what did you learn? You know, what has this session done for you? Tell me so that I can see whether I should run another one, whether it was helpful, whether you guys learned something. Can you tell me, you know, how this session has helped you in the comments? This is one thing I want you to do for me. I've, you know, it's, I've been up since six o'clock my time. <laughs> I've been up since six o'clock my time because I'm in Toronto, but I know this is important, right? You know, I know this is important, so it doesn't matter. And I may not be as vocal online all the time because, hello, I'm also hustling. You know what I'm saying? I'm still looking for, I'm still pushing. You know, so I'm not always online all the time. And that's why getting has a structure to support you. We're here to support you. It's a system that will work for you. But please don't give up. You can do it. Get a friend. Bring a friend along. If you know that you don't want to level up alone, bring a friend along. That you say, this guy, this year is our year. Bring a friend along. And I, 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 I'm going to stop, um, team. So Facebook, you see why you should come? People on Facebook, you see why you should come into our, <laughs> into the Zoom instead? We're going to say bye to the Facebook crew now, okay? And now, because I want to give the gist, you know, I want to give the gist in here. So I'm going to say bye to the Facebook crew. Next time, register for the webinar. So let me say bye to Facebook. You know, so that I can say some internal, some internal gists, right? Bye, Facebook. Um, please, if you need, um, I'm trying to stop the, the the live stream. If you need um the link, please, it's um go to our website www.gettingeduconsulting.com. Um, visit us or send us a message on Facebook. Send us a message on Instagram at Getting Edu. Right, we're always very very happy to talk about uh you know to 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 help you out. So I'm going to stop the live stream now. And yeah, so this is the official end. I think we've answered almost all the questions except questions that are extremely. You know, so this is the official end. Um, so thank you so much for joining. And um, if you would like to join the bootcamp, just shoot us an email at info at getting.com.ng or, you know, just DM us at getting edu. Uh, message us. We're always happy to, 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 to chat. Google us, getting education consulting. And that's on that. And I hear it to your lovely up. You know, I wish somebody could play the song I like so much. Level up, level up, level up, level up, level up, level up. Somebody should write level up in the comments. So here's to your leveling up. And I really hope that you do the work. You join us, right? And you do the work that will help you get to the next level. So see you soon. Again, it's www.gettingeduconsulting.com and feel free to shoot us an email and we'll definitely get back to you. Okay.